This is Evan Abrams, and in this After Effects tutorial, we're looking at one of my most commonly used expressions in After Effects. It's the value at time expression. Now I'm hoping that this tutorial will give you a lot of value for your time. Yikes, <laughs> brutal puns. We're gonna talk about what the expression does, how to use it, and we're gonna check out a few examples to hopefully inspire your journey to get a little deeper into expressions. So please follow along and we'll get into it without delay. That is uh, two more pretty brutal puns, which will probably make more sense after the tutorial. Anyway, I'm Evan Abrams. This is the value at time expression in Adobe After Effects. All right, so as you saw in the intro, we've had this wonderful trail of circles going around. And thanks to the value at time expression, I only had to put keyframes on one of them and all the others follow along because they're all referencing the value of that first leader at different times. So that's one of the fun things we can do with this expression. But what is it really doing? What does value at time mean? Well. Here's our first example. We're looking at this wonderful uh, clock situation. We have keyframes set on the rotation of this pointer. So the pointer is turning around. And let's say the rotation is gonna start here at zero. So at zero seconds, the value of the rotation is zero. And here at five seconds, the value of the rotation is five. We can tell because we've put keyframes on it. So we've chosen those values. Now with these followers, these little lines here, and really all they are, this follower is just this layer here. So if we rotate it around, we'll end up with these kind of cardinal points, these clock points. I'm gonna hit EE to call up the expression that we've written on the rotation of that follower. And what we've written is this comp dot layer, meaning inside this comp, look for a layer, and which layer specifically? Well, in this argument, in these parentheses for the layer, we're saying, look at the layer named pointer, and then dot, or more specifically, look into its transform, more specifically, its rotation, and then even more specifically, its value at time. So value at time really goes here on the end saying, hey, we're looking at this thing more specifically, give me its value at time. So we're putting this little period, this decimal, this full stop, and then we're saying value at time. And then in its argument, its parenthetical, its parentheses, we wanna say what time we're interested in. So what time are we talking about? Well, zero, and zero in this case means zero seconds. The value at time always wants you to tell it a time in seconds. For all of these followers, all of these little things we've got arrayed around, we've just chosen different times. So we've chosen time five, four, three, two, one. So at zero seconds, it was here. And then at one second, this value is gonna be here. Okay, that makes sense. We can visually see that. Two seconds, oh yeah, it's pointing at the one that we've asked to have the value at time two, and so on around like that. So if we were to change what the value is here at zero seconds, everything is going to adjust because it's at a different value at one, two, three, four, and five seconds. Similarly, right now we're looking at linear keyframes. If I easy ease them by hitting F9, notice these go to new locations because at one second, thanks to this easing, this is the location it goes to. So when we're thinking about the value at time, just remember, if you change anything about that property, then everything else is going to adjust accordingly because we're looking at the value of that thing at a certain time. One of the most common ways we make use of this is to create a trail of layers. So here we go, here's a nice little example. We got this arrow that goes around and then we have this trail that comes out behind it. So we've done a few extra things here. So let's talk about how the expression changes, how we manipulate it in order to make a kind of trail of layers. I'm gonna remove a bunch of these because they're not really important right now, but we have a leader and we have a follower. So the leader, we're really just changing its position. So the position is just going along, having a good time, going from here to there to there to here, good for it. And we've gone ahead and gone layer, transform, auto orient, and we have it orienting along the path. So it's turning, having a good time. It's flowing along, 
nice. So if we wanted to put a trail of things behind this, we might say, oh, I know, I'll just add uh, the echo effect on here, right? We could do that. You could stick an echo effect on and tweak the number of echoes and you'll end up with a bunch of triangles. But instead you might say, well, I want a trail of different colored triangles or I want a trail of hexagons or I want a trail of circles or something. Who knows? Who knows what you need? Here's how you might accomplish that. And I say might because there's many ways to write this out or to arrive at the same thing using expressions or using any methods in After Effects really. But here's one way. We take our follower and our followers maybe they're always going to be underneath of each other and they're always going to be under the leader. So I've gone ahead and written P, a variable named P, and you can write var variable P if you like, is equal to this comp dot layer and inside our parentheses, our argument for the layer, we're saying look at index minus one, meaning look at the layer that is index three, because that's whenever we write index, it's the index of this current layer, index minus one, which would mean well, not three, but two, or the layer that's always above. So index minus one is always, hey, what's the layer above me doing? So look at that, look at its transform, look at its position, and that's the end of that variable. So P is equal to the position of the layer above. Let's make another variable. And the other variable is going to be called D. We'll say D for maybe displacement, perhaps, or delay. And D is equal to this comp dot layer adjustment layer. So we're looking up here. And then the effect called slider control. And then we're looking at the slider of the slider control, which in this case is set to five. And then we're going to multiply that by this comp. That's right, we're looking at this comp again, dot frame duration. And frame duration is how long each frame lasts in seconds. Variable D is basically five times the duration of a frame, which is five frames. If this is one, then we're looking at the duration of one frame, which is great because the value at time would like us to tell it a time in seconds, which is why we're making that frame duration change. So our final line is P, which is looking at this position, dot value at time. So we're looking at the value at time of that position. And then what time? What time are we looking at? Well, we're looking at time, which is gonna display whatever time the playhead is. So right here, time is two minus D, and D is five frames worth of seconds. So this is at the position that the leader was at five frames ago. And that is always true. That's why it's always lagging behind by five frames. So if I were to adjust this slider here to like a one, now it's only one frame behind. And because we've set it up that it's always referencing the layers above it, I can go ahead and go duplicate, duplicate a bunch of these. All of them, each layer is referencing the layer above it. So then if I go ahead and increase this a little bit, you can see that we're able to make the tail longer, shorter, more spread out, less spread out as we like. So we can have the tail grow from being no tail at all as this thing kind of stretches out. Then we arrive at, at a five and then it's gonna, maybe it's gonna pack itself back up and it should pack itself up by here, boom. So we could do that kind of thing since we're now able to introduce little keyframes into how much of that tail. That's because we're packing all of the stuff into that value at time argument. So if you want a delay of some kind, that time, the value at time needs to be time minus something. And in this case, we've linked up that something to a slider control so we have a little bit of control over it. If you're gonna make multiple instances of something, you're gonna to wanna to link these properties and variables into slider controls so you can control all of them with one slider instead of having to go in and manually change each of the instances. But that's how we might make a tail. There's another way we might do it, because right now all of these layers are referencing the one above each other, which is okay, but like I said, you can rewrite just about anything in After Effects to look at things a little bit differently. So you could make all of the followers look at the leader. So instead of referencing each other, they reference only back to the leader. So P is equal to that. And then we just slip in this little bit in here. So instead, the delay is getting shifted in accordance with what index value the layers have. So it's just another way of basically writing the exact same thing. Expressions are a little bit like any language. There are multiple ways to say the same thing. Some are more verbose than others, some take more lines, and some can be a lot more efficient. You can often say the same thing with fewer words, and the same is true with expressions. So let's look at one more example to hopefully cement the value at time for you. 
So here we have a null object. We're just moving its position all around. It's going on this fun little path. We, it's going up here, around there, good for it. We've written on these circles, this expression, P equals position of that null, awesome. And then X is equal to, we're looking at a slider control again. And each of these layers has a little slider control on it. And so let's say we set this to like 50. All right, so the slider is set to 50%, and we're using the linear expression. We've talked about the linear expression on this channel before, but we'll say it here. The linear remaps things. It remaps things in a linear way. So we're basically taking the value of that slider control, and we're remapping the value 0 to 100 into the value 0 to 4. Now, why would we do that? Well, the animation of the null takes 4 seconds, 0 to 4 seconds. So I can now use the slider control to describe what percentage along this path I want it to be at, which can be a good time, especially if I know this might actually end up changing. So if I start altering this path, you'll notice all of the circles are changing their position based on where this path goes. So if you have comps that need to be hanging out along the path of like a rocket ship or something, or if this is like a video game thing and it needs to Pac-Man eat up all these circles, well, you can have them hang out always on this path. They will always be along the path of this thing. And that keeps it all controlled. So you don't have to manually stick keyframes on all of these things. You can use an expression to force them to always be along that path. Now we've been using this on rotation, on position. You can use value at time on any property, any property at all. For a little bit of extra fun, try applying it to the time remap property of a composition. And it's fun to kind of delay animation using this method. Anyway, I think I've taken up enough of your valuable time. Hopefully this gets you started using the value at time expression. If you like learning about After Effects, motion design, expressions, please subscribe to this channel. It's the kind of thing we talk about around here. I try to get a tutorial up every week. Make sure you subscribe and turn on notifications to find out when slash if that happens. If you have questions about the value at time expression, or any expression really, please let me know in the comments, or reach out to me on Twitter, at EC Abrams on there, or get in touch on the Facebook group, links to all that in the description. If you want to get your hands on the project file that we just worked on, if you want to see these examples and play around with them and understand what's going on, head on over to evanabrams.com, links to that file are in the description in the cards, go check that out. It's available at pay what you like pricing, every little bit helps keep the channel going, and that is pretty much it. Thank you so much for following along, and if you subscribe to the channel, I'll see you around the internet.